Do you want to connect your Arduino Nano ESP32 to the Arduino Cloud so that you can control your projects halfway around the world using a phone app or a web browser? In this video, I'm going to show you eight easy steps to get an Arduino Nano ESP32 online or really any board connected to the Arduino Cloud. In addition, I've created a simple tool that's going to help you decide exactly which board you should buy in order to get onto the Arduino Cloud. You can find it in the link in the description description or if you just go to this QR code up here you can uh, scan that and download the tool as well. My name is Mike Chage. I'm the owner of Programming Electronics Academy where we've been helping people learn how to build and program with Arduino for over a decade. Okay let's get into this. All right, step one, you need to sign up for an Arduino Cloud account. So just go to arduino.cc and sign up for account. No big surprises here. Okay, step two, I'm gonna connect my Arduino board to my computer via USB cable. All right, step three, I'm gonna go ahead and add a device. So over here on the left, I just click devices and we'll click add device. Gotta select the type of device. I have an Arduino board, I'll select this. I have it connected via USB, I'll select via USB. Now, it tells me I need to install the latest Arduino cloud agent. So I'll go ahead and click install, download. I'll save it to my desktop. I'll find the file and run it drag it over to my applications. This is very similar for PC. Then I'll go ahead and open up the cloud agent. I'll say I wanna open it. It runs in the top up here and you don't interact with it much after that. Okay, now it senses that the agent is ready and uh, we're ready to go. Now it's asking me to select which board. So I'm gonna select the Arduino Nano ESP32 that I have connected. It shows it connected, I'll hit continue. Now I gotta give the device a name. I like to use the serial number of the board as part of the name. So they provide you with a device ID and a secret key. They prompt you to download it. So I'll go ahead and download it. And the place I save it is in my Arduino sketchbook folder. And then I have a special folder in here called Arduino Cloud Keys. Open this up. I save it in here, but I just um, make sure to put on the name of the device. That way it helps me find it. I acknowledge that I've uh, got the device ID and secret key and I continue. All right, so we've added the device. The next step is to add a thing. So down here, if you click on this little icon, we're gonna go ahead and create a thing. It'll take us to the things dashboard. Once we have our thing, we can go ahead and set the network SSID and password for our device. I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. So you click right here and just add your network name, password, and then the secret key that you had before. Now what this does is it actually brings me to a sketch and what I'm gonna do at this point is go ahead and upload the sketch just to make sure that the plumbing is working and we've got the device online. Okay, the code's loaded successfully. I'll go back up to setup here and if we refresh the screen, we'll see that the device is now online. All right, the device is online. Okay, so we've created our thing, it's online. That's the end of step four. Now step five, we're gonna go ahead and add a cloud variable. So I wanna control a servo motor so I am going to add a servo position variable. I'll select the variable type. This will be an integer. Now I need to select the permissions. This is gonna be read and write because I wanna be able to change the value of this variable from the cloud. If I only wanted to monitor a value, say I had a board with a sensor and I only wanted to read the value, then I would select read only, but I wanna be able to write the value too. And then they're asking for the variable update policy. And this is asking how often do you want to update the variable from the device to the cloud? And I'm going to say, I want to do it when that value changes. That's when I want to update the cloud and I'll set the threshold to zero, which means any change of this variable is going to update the cloud. We could select periodically and then set some time frame, like, you know, one second or, you know, a thousand seconds or however many seconds you want. And that's the frequency with which the variable would update on the cloud. All right. On change, add variable. When you add a cloud variable, code gets added to your sketch. So namely, in this header file right here, things properties.h, when you add a variable that has read and write permissions, it's going to create the variable declaration for you, and it's also going to create a function prototype in things.properties, but it will also create a stub of that function down at the bottom, and this stub on servo position change is where you're going to write the code that will do the things you wanna do when you change the variable in the Arduino cloud. So what I wanna do here is adjust the position of a servo 
when I move a little slider on the cloud. So what I'm going to do is write some code that's going to get executed every time that slider moves. Let me do that right now. Okay, so what I did is I added a servo library for my ESP32. I created a servo object. I attached the servo. I'm going to be using pin 7 on the Arduino Nano ESP32. I didn't add anything to the loop. Then down here, I added a function servo.write servo position to this callback function. So again, anytime I move a slider, once we build this dashboard, then this function is going to get called and the value that servo position is that, that it got adjusted to on the dashboard, that's what is going to write to the servo in the actual physical world. Now I'm going to go ahead and upload this to the board. All right, the code is uploaded. And now what I'm going to do is build a dashboard so that I can actually control that servo position variable. So up here in the top left, if I click this, I can go to my dashboards. I don't have any yet, so I'll go ahead and click create dashboard. And I want to add a widget. So the widgets are what you add to control different things. So I'll go ahead and click edit, add, and the widget type, I said I wanted a slider, so I'll just select slider. I'll give it a name. And now I want to link this to my thing. So here's the thing I made. And here is the servo position cloud variable that is a part of that thing. I'll go ahead and click link variable. Now it's been linked and I'm going to give a value range. So I've added my widget. I'll go ahead and give this dashboard a name. I'll select done. Now I'm going to go ahead and assemble my circuit. All right, this is a really straightforward circuit. You'll notice that my ESP32 is no longer connected to my computer via USB. It's being powered by a external five volt power supply, the servo being controlled by that five volt power supply. And there is a data pin, pin seven, as you recall, is what I have attached to, with the servo. And then of course, just ground and power. So now when I go to my dashboard, I can move this and you'll see the servo moves. And I can do the same thing with my phone app. So you just download the Arduino phone app, sign into the account, and it works just as easily. And it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you can move your servo. Now, if you want to figure out exactly which board that you should get for your project to get it onto the Arduino cloud, I made a tool that will help you decide that. It'll show you the different modalities, the connection modalities, and then give you an idea of what boards are available. You can download that tool in the description or just at this QR code right up here. Now, if you're just getting into Arduino, there are some things I wish I would have known when I started. I made a video about those three things. You can check it out right here. These are things I wish I would have known when I started, I don't know, over 15 years ago working with Arduino. This video right here is going to give you the scoop on those.